Alright, so today I'm going to be going over how we can pack three different masks into one texture. So this can be very useful if you, let's say, you have an ambient occlusion uh, mask and maybe a specular mask and a shadow mask. Like all different things you want to use for in the node editor. Well, we can go ahead and store these in one texture. So let's say you have a, a character and you have all this stuff and you don't want three different textures. As long as it doesn't need to include color data, as long as it's just black and white, we can store basically whatever information you want in there. So what we can go ahead and do is come over and I'm going to show you how to set it up. So what you're going to want to do, of course, is have your images and I already have them. I made them a little while ago and I'm going to go get them in just a second. So let's open up the node editor. I'm going to create a new group and we're going to be in Blender render for this. Um, just makes it simpler. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is go input. So here, Shift A, input and geometry. And what we can go ahead and do is just connect this thread here and you say, oh, suddenly it's not working. And you get this problem. Um, doesn't allow you to plug those in there anymore. Anyway, what we can go ahead and do is hook this up to a, a t -t 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 input texture. We need one of these. All right, so we need three of these because these are going to be the different masks we have. So we can have the first mask here, the second one, and the third one here. So let's connect these up. All right. And let's go and unwrap this. Uh, you probably have it unwrapped if you're doing this normally, but this is to save all of our textures into a different thing. Now, I'm sure you could do this with GIMP. Um, I am just doing it with Blender. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and go and get a converter, um, RGB combine. We can combine all of these together and once we've done this, I'll show you how we can uncombine it to use it for our materials. So, now that it's done, all we need to do is select the textures we want. So, three of these. I'm going to go open, and I'm going to go to mix, which is the folder I have all the stuff. So, six there, I'm going to open that one. And then I'm going to come down here and open uh, the next one. And then I'm going to come down here and open the next one. All right. So now... What you should see is if we select this one, bam, suddenly we get this red color. What's happening here? Bam, another color, and then bam again. Look at that. Wow. So what's happening here? Um, each of these passes, as you can see, is they're all being combined into one image. And if we go RGB split, as you can see again, we can get any of these passes that we want again. Uh, but the useful thing is this is not just in Blender kind of thing. You can't, it's not like once you get, save it out of Blender, it will be like that. You can have this store this wherever you like. So the way I do it, I'm sure there's different ways, better ways. Um, what I do is I just go ahead and create a new material. Make sure you have all of the vertex selected. So you want to have them all selected. Then you want to go ahead and just make sure you select this material, make sure not overriding any of the other ones because it's how it works in Blender Eternal. Cycles is a bit different, but in Blender Eternal you want to make sure you have all of the vertex selected and then just make sure you click on the right one so they're based to this one. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and come down here. And I'm going to go back full render for this object. And the reason for this is basically this is going to bake this out. So this is going to have this image um, baked out. So if I hit this. As you can see, it's just made basically a copy of this image. Um, all right, so there we go. There is our image there. So what we can go ahead and do is go ahead and save, and we can go to our folder, which we have here. And we can call it something like a mix. All right, so that should be good. Mix uh, PNG or JPEG, so whatever you want to do. All right, so there we are. Alright, so let's try using this as a mask for another object, or this is probably the same object in your case, but let's see how we can use this in the notes. So we can go ahead and move this up, create a new material, and we're going to move this down here, oh, sorry, across here, and we're going to go uh, input, geometry, and we're going to go UVs, then we're going to go texture, we're going to connect that in, we're going to go here and create a new one 
and we're going to go to mix and we're going to select our mix material um now the reason we're creating this texture here is because of we can't select from this list unless we create it here so what you're going to you can just go ahead and delete this if you like if you have a material in this case so it should be adding soon if we have the material here it is going to create problems so you do want to make sure you delete these if you're not going to use them it will not delete them from this list it just they won't show up here so let's go here all right so we can go ahead and select this now and you say oh what have i done wrong uh we just haven't used uv unwrapped it it's easy enough to fix oh, it's just a plain so i'm just going you unwrap reset if you had a character or something it would be unwrapped anyway so it doesn't really matter all right so there we go so how can we use this um well let's go ahead and kind of make a little setup with this so let's go ahead and add a point lamp and move this up and we want to go ahead and chuck in a material click that there boom now we have a material so we want to go ahead and i'm going to move this so it looks like the shadow's coming from it and i'm going to go ahead and add a converter um split rgb and we can select the one we want so see no uh -huh. all right so this is our specular so now we only get specular i can let's let's make the specular a bit more intense um uh, there we go it's so basically yep there we go so as you can see it's it's really working now um i'm just gonna just really want to make so there you can definitely now you can see it it's really showing up that it's only going those mounds which is useful um now what we can go ahead and do just for a bit of fun is just add a rgb let's go blue who doesn't like blue and connect that in and we want to go color mix and then we can go ahead and get this g um oh Actually, I want this R because that's the ambient occlusion, and we can go ahead and plug that in, and we can say color multiply. Let me get rid of the specular. I can't see what I'm doing. And I'm also going to change this to a sun lamp so I can see. So there we go. There is our ambient occlusion. So if we had a cube sitting here, whoa, ambient occlusion. It doesn't look quite right though because ambient occlusion should be on this cube as well. But you, as you can see, yeah, it works. And last of all, just to end it off, just to make this tutorial finished i might as well connect this up and connect the geometry and as you can see you can have shadows whatever you want you can store all kinds of different information in here um yeah but pretty much there we go that is it uh, you can store all of these different maps in one texture i mean you could give it like a custom name like i don't know combine all the letters first letters of whatever you're putting in that could be the name of it or something i don't know but there we go. It's a way, to, simple way to save into a certain file, and then you can output it into four different things. And also, if you use alpha, I'm pretty sure if you're using a PNG, this value will be the alpha. So if you use alpha as well, you can have a different, sorry, another um, controlling thing. So you could even have four. I haven't tested it out, but it should work. So there we go. Just a really basic thing, but I think it could be useful in some people's workflows when they don't want three different files, um, you know, just for specular and stuff. So you do need nodes for it, but it does work quite well well so if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects you can go ahead and subscribe because i come out with a new tutorial every single week so have a great week keep blendering and make something cool um so have a great week bye